おさわりキース歌よ錦とな伝説の祝図桜かばきやっ雪を舞えAfter waiting nearly a year, Hayaka is finally out. The question is, was it worth the wait? In this video, I'll break down the best team builds for Hayaka so you can find that out for yourself. We'll be looking at teams for both Hayaka DPS and sub DPS and analyzing how she fits in each role. As always, I'm going over a bunch of different variations so that you can find a team that not only works for the characters you have, but also suits the way you play the game the best. I tried to provide a ton of different combos and a variety of characters so that each team doesn't feel like an off-brand version of another. I'm super excited to show you guys all these different team builds. Ayaka is a sword-wielding character with the Cryo Vision. Her ascension stat is crit damage, which is great for a main or sub DPS carry. This, along with her passives and skill set, sets her up to deal massive amounts of sustained cryo damage through normal and charge attacks. As far as elemental reactions, Melt and Freeze are the clear winners. Melt is great in combo burst comps, specifically in battles where AoE damage will get the most value. However, due to its long internal cooldown, Freeze is better when it comes to large bosses that require sustained damage. Generally speaking, Ayaka DPS will benefit more from Freeze than sub DPS Ayaka due to her ability to create more Freeze procs when she's on the field herself. I actually don't like Superconduct in combination with Ayaka. She does have the ability to buff her own basic attacks, but there's more value in also making use of the huge cryo damage bonus steroid that she gets after using her sprint. Plus, her constellations also benefit her ability to deal cryo damage over anything else. Moving along, Cryo Resonance is clearly the best for Ayaka. The extra crit rate will complement her natural scaling into crit damage, and due to her kit, be active pretty much the entire fight. Other resonances that are also decent include Pyro and Geo, and the rest you should almost never run with Ayaka. Let's take a look first at the best teams for Ayaka DPS. I've gone ahead and labeled Teams Abyss ready, but I think that team is something you can plug and play in Abyss. Obviously, each Abyss reset comes with floors and chambers of varying enemies and weaknesses, so I would suggest that you use these teams as the foundation and tweak it with your situation and preference. But first, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Surfshark is not your typical VPN. It's jam-packed with features that will level up your experience in and out of game. With over 3200 servers in 65 countries, Finding the best server to connect to is easy and allows you to maximize your gaming experience with your friends overseas. Plus, their industry-leading protocol secures your data and prevents IP and DNS leaks so you won't have to constantly worry about random players joining your world and stealing your account info. Also, if you are the 1% of the Genshin population that plays on the PS4 or PS5, or you alternate between playing on your phone and computer, Rest assured, just one subscription allows you to run Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices at the same time. Those are just a few of the many features that Surfshark offers, and I'm so happy that I can endorse a product that I actually like using. You can use my promo code to receive 83% off and 3 extra months for free. That's so much more money saved they can spend on more 2D waifus. Plus, if you're not satisfied, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so go try it out. Team 1 features Ayaka, Diona, Shangling, and Venti or Sucrose or Kazua. This team comp is packed with AoE damage that's great for fighting large mobs of enemies. I put this as my top team solely because of the amount of utility you have at your disposal. Diona gives you cryo resonance while also providing you insane sustain with her shield and healing. Also worthy to note that Sacrificial Bow on Diona can generate a lot of energy for your Ayaka, so you can spam your burst even more. Shangling as a melt enabler and Venti as a grouper that synergizes perfectly with Ayaka's burst. With the quick cooldown of Venti's burst and so much energy regeneration for Ayaka, you'll be able to spam your combo every time it's off cooldown. 
Kazuha is a fine substitute as an animal character, and Sucrose is decent, but nothing really beats Venti here. You can also substitute out Diona if you feel confident enough that you won't die for someone like Ganyu to get even more AoE damage and a cryo steroid to boot. The Abyss core for this comp is Ayaka, Venti, Shangling, and then you flex that last spot. Team 2 features Ayaka, Ganyu or Albedo, Chongyun, and Shinshu. This is actually one of my favorite teams because of how fun and satisfying it is to play. In this team, your strategy is to play for permafreeze. Xingqiu ult gives you hydro procs. This in combination of Chongyu making your Ayaka's attack cryo allows you to sit back and spam charge attacks. This playstyle synergizes really well with Ayaka's kit. Her passive gives her additional normal and charge attack damage as well as increased cryo damage bonus. So by using Chung Yun, you get to maximize the value of both these buffs while also getting the extra attack speed in the field. Ganyu adds even more to this, her ult gives the character inside of her ult field extra cryo damage, so your basic attacks are also buffed by this as well under Chung Yun's ice field. You can substitute Ganyu out for Albedo, which will also give you extra damage in the form of Shatter. Shinshu, in addition to procking Freeze, gives you a bit of heal and extra resistances. However, because your opponents will be frozen most of the time, they won't have a lot of opportunities to attack you. This team comp excels in boss fights, and I'd heavily recommend giving this a try or playing around with this build if you have the characters. The Abyss core for this comp is Ayaka, Chongyun, Shinshu, and then you flex that last spot. Team 3 features Ayaka, Shinshu, Shangling, and Bennett. This team takes inspiration of the national team and the power of snapshot with Bennett and Shangling combo. Unlike the two other teams I've mentioned, this team works in almost any scenario. It has enough AoE to deal with large mobs and also enough utility in the form of freeze and vape to sustain long fights with single target bosses. However, because of the added versatility, its power level is a bit lower in direct comparison to teams 1 and 2. Ayaka is great at applying cryo and her burst works very well with Shangling's Pyronado. Xingqiu and Ayaka together provide you the ability to proc freeze, and Xingqiu and Shangling gives you consistent vape procs while you wait for the next melt proc. On top of all this, you also get pyro resonance buff as a small bonus. The abyss core for this comp is Ayaka, Shangling, Xingqiu, and Flex. Team 4 features Ayaka, Beidou or Traveler Official, Xingqiu, and Zhongli. So if you really want to play an electro character of Ayaka, you still can, and this comp is the best super conduct team for Ayaka. Beidou is my preferred selection, as her ability to proc super conduct, and also add some nice burst damage is welcomed in a team that lacks the damage in comparison to the other teams. Electro Traveler also has amazing energy regeneration that will give you some spam and an electro charge procs for a bit of AoE. Lastly, Zhongli finishes up this comp with a huge shield and makes up for the lack of burst healing and a nice AoE stun that will allow you to land consecutive charge attacks in place. The Abyss core for this comp is Ayaka, Beidou, Xingqiu, and then Flex. Team 5 is my free to play and features Ayaka, Shangling, Kaya, and Barbara. Again, Ayaka and Shangling work very well to deal AoE melt damage. Kaya gives us access to cryo resonance, so we'll be able to stack more crit damage in our artifacts and allow us to do more damage overall with Ayaka. Barbara is the healer of our team, and you'll be able to get in some cheeky freeze and vape procs once in a while, but don't count on it. Let's take a look at some teams for sub DPS Ayaka. There's honestly not a lot of great options here. A lot of the teams that Ayaka would be good in, there are just simply better cryo characters that fit the bill. Team 6 features Child, Ayaka, Shinchu, and Kazuha. If you wanted to play a permafreeze Child team, Ayaka actually plays very well here. She does better than Ganyu in the fact that her burst is more concentrated in a smaller region. In this way, if you can combo your Kazuo Vacuum with your Ayaka Burst, then swap to Child's Dagger form, AoE freeze the group enemies, then get a lot of value from your Riptide procs. This also works very well with Ayaka's E into Kazuo E, then Child Dagger form, as you can see from the gameplay here. The Abyss core for this comp is Child, Ayaka, Kazuo, and then Flex. Teammate features Klee or Yang Fei, Ayaka, Shinchu or Bennett, and Venti. To me, I still like Ganyu instead of Ayaka in a team like this, but Ayaka definitely has some nice synergies. 
I like Ayaka's burst much more than Venti, since the damage is more compacted into one region than spread out like Ganyu's. Also, Ayaka's E affects a large region instantaneously, so you can quickly follow up with a pyro attack to proc melt in that region. The best core for this comp is Klee or Yang Fei, Ayaka, Venti, and Inflex. Team 9 is my free to play and features Amber, Ayaka, Shangling, and Barbara. This might be my first team ever that I've built with Amber in it, so I consider that an accomplishment in of itself. Ayaka Burst or E into Amber Burst gives you a good bit of AoE prowess, you also have Shangling's Pyronado to fall back on. Shangling's Constellations also boost your Amber's Pyro damage, and Barbara is your main healer here. I don't know if anyone would actually play this team, and I'd rather play main DPS Ayaka as a free to play instead. I actually really enjoyed the way Mihoyo designed Ayaka, and you can see in the teams I've created that there are a lot of different playstyles that take advantage of her kit. I also like the fact that her sprint actually has some combat use, which changes the way you fight when you play her as compared to any other character. Let me know in the comments if there's a team build you're currently playing that I didn't mention here, I'd love to check them all out. And if you're up to this point and you're not subscribed already, please do so as it really helps me out as well as liking and commenting to this video for the algorithm. Thank you for watching, till next time.